In the review session, we looked at the limit as xy goes to 0, 0 of sine of xy squared over x squared plus y squared. I'd like to prove that this limit is equal to 0. Uh, I'll try to do that in two different ways, using polar coordinates and using epsilon delta. To do both of these ways, I need to use the fact that sine of w for any real number w has absolute value less than or equal to the absolute value of w, which I proved in a separate video. So first, let's do a proof using polar coordinates. So let's let x be equal to r cosine theta and y equal to r sine theta, and we'll look at the limit as r goes to 0 of sine of r cosine theta, r squared sine squared theta, over r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta. I've just plugged in for x and y. So that's the same thing as the limit as r goes to 0 of sine of r cubed cosine theta sine squared theta divided by or just r squared. Okay, so now I want to use the fact that that the sine of the absolute value of the sine of w is always less than or equal to the absolute value of w. So we know that sine of r cubed cosine theta sine squared theta, in particular, the absolute value of that is less than or equal to the absolute value of r cubed cosine theta sine squared theta, and that is less than or equal to the radius cubed, since the absolute value of cosine theta sine squared theta is always got to be less than 1. In other words, sine of r cubed cosine theta sine squared theta has got to be between r cubed and negative r cubed. That's just another way of writing this absolute value inequality. Okay, so now if we divide all three sides of this equation by the positive number r squared, we get that negative r is less than or equal to our quantity of interest. So I'll copy here, which is less than or equal to r. Now we can apply the squeeze theorem. So the squeeze theorem, we know that the limit as r goes to 0 of negative r has got to be 0, and the limit as r goes to 0 of r has got to be 0, and therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the limit as r goes to 0 of this middle thing has got to also equal 0. And that completes our proof using polar coordinates. Now I'm going to try to erase all this and do the same proof using epsilons and deltas. Okay, so to do a proof using epsilons and deltas, we need to start with it, an epsilon greater than zero, and then find a delta greater than zero such that whenever our point is within delta distance of zero, since that's where we're going to, our function value, sine x y squared over x squared plus y squared, is going to be within epsilon of the, the hypothesized limit of zero. Now for this particular example, we're just going to use delta equal to, let's say, epsilon over 2. I think we could really actually get by with epsilon, but we'll just use epsilon over 2 just to make it look a little bit better and, and give us a little margin of error if we need it. Okay, so we want to show that if square root of x squared plus y squared is less than epsilon over 2, then this absolute value quantity is less than epsilon. I just dropped the, the, the 0 here, but otherwise it's just the same thing as this. Okay, so um, let's use our fabulous fact here and say we know that the sine of xy squared absolute value is less than xy squared's absolute value. So if we divide that by x squared plus y squared on both sides, we get this inequality, which is exactly what we're looking for. I'll just write it with a single absolute value sign to make it look even more like what we're looking for. Okay, so this is just the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y squared, or the absolute value of x squared plus y squared. I just split up the absolute values over the product here. And actually, I mean, I really just need the absolute value on the x, right? Because everything else in sight is already positive. So now I know that y squared is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared. 
right? Because adding on an x squared is only going to make y squared bigger unless x is, happens to be 0, in which case they're equal. So that part's definitely true. And now we also know that the absolute value of x is the same thing as the square root of x squared is going to be less than or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And that's just because x squared is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared by the same reasoning. So if you take the square root of both sides, both of these things are positive, you'll still have that kind of inequality. Okay, so that means that if I go back up here, uh, we have that uh, this is going to be less than or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared times x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. Cancel out these terms here, and I get this is less than or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, which by assumption, we're assuming this is less than epsilon over 2, so it's definitely less than epsilon. So in other words, as long as this is less than epsilon over 2, the thing that we're interested in is also less than epsilon over 2, and it's definitely less than epsilon. So that finishes the epsilon delta proof. Notice that this proof, like the one we did in polar coordinates, they both rely on this fact about the absolute value of sine of something being less than the absolute value of that thing itself.